Are you suffering from wrist pain, maybe a tingling or numbness or weakness that runs down your first three and maybe even half of your ring finger? If so, you might be suffering from carpal tunnel syndrome. You probably already suspect that. That's probably why you're watching this video. Let's do two quick tests together. It can help you determine if this is what's going on. The first test is called Phelan's test. Flex your wrists, press them together in front of you with about a five out of 10 intensity. You don't wanna jam your wrist, but you do wanna apply just a little bit of pressure. You stay right there. What we're attempting to do is trigger, if you have carpal tunnel syndrome, some pressure on that median nerve. Your median nerve runs down your arm and it passes through your carpal tunnel. And if it is impinged, which basically means pinched or pushed upon, it can cause pain in and around your wrist down into your thumb, index, middle finger, and even part of your ring finger. Could be causing numbness or tingling or pain or weakness in your hand. Let's try one more test here. This is called Tennell's sign or Tennell's test. Take the wrist in question. Oftentimes it affects your dominant hand more than the other one. In that case, it'd be my right hand. So I'll put it down face up on my table. I'll use two fingers. At home, I like to use the back of a butter knife. You just need something to tap and we'd like to tap with about a five out of 10 intensity. So not to cause you any kind of bruising or damage, but nice pressure with two fingers right on your wrist, right where that carpal tunnel is. What I'm attempting to do here again is test that median nerve. See if I might, by tapping here, induce pain or numbness or tingling or a weakness in my hand. Now, keep in mind, everybody is different. For example, I can definitely feel tingling and I don't have carpal tunnel syndrome right now. What we're looking for is a really pronounced pain from one or both of those tests. It might be, might be an indication that you're suffering from carpal tunnel syndrome. This is one of the most common nerve conditions ever. It's right up there with sciatica, that's the bad news. It affects women more than men for a couple of reasons we'll get into in just a moment. The good news is very often it can resolve on its own and with a little bit of self-care at home and a little bit of education, you can accelerate that healing process and most importantly, hopefully, prevent it from happening again. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher and a trainer. Carpal tunnel syndrome almost never happens in a yoga room because of the way we move, but we have a lot of people, office workers and people who work in the trades specifically, who will come into a yoga class with an existing carpal tunnel trying to improve it. Sometimes downward facing dog, upward facing dog can actually make it worse. In this video, I will share with you what I've learned working with students. Hopefully it will be help for you as well. Number one, we'll talk about the anatomy of your carpal tunnel and carpal tunnel syndrome. Number two, we will look at what goes wrong. Nobody knows exactly the causes, but there are some very good hypotheses. Number three, we will look at a basic self-care routine of strength and stretch and decompression on your wrist. And lastly, we'll look at some potential landmines to avoid to hopefully not exacerbate the problem. Quick disclaimer here, I'm not a medical doctor. In some situations, people do need carpal tunnel surgery. Well, let's hope you don't have to go there, but please use this video for educational purposes only. When we look at the anatomy of the carpal tunnel, it's important to remember that it is quite literally a tunnel. If you flip your palm up and look down at your wrist, let's imagine we strip away all the soft tissue. What you'd see on the bottom of your tunnel are two rows of four carpal bones. These are these little teeny bones here. They make up the bottom of your carpal tunnel. Now the roof of your carpal tunnel, this is your transverse carpal ligament. Ligaments are bone to bone connective tissues. Think about it kind of like a, a clear white belt, a really strong piece of leather here on the top. Now going through your carpal tunnel, you have tendons. Tendons are muscle, in this case, finger muscle to bone connective tissues. So we've got a ligament, we have tendons, and then you have your median nerve running right through that tunnel. Now let's talk about what goes wrong, or at least what we think might be going wrong, because nobody knows for sure. When people have carpal tunnel syndrome, they're very often office workers on a keyboard all day long. They're very often working in the trade, so maybe they're cutting hair, massage therapists, carpenters, plumbers working with their hands. There's a very clear correlation, or maybe even causation, with repetitive stress, especially in a very specific posture throughout the day. What might be happening? Well, remember, we've got a ligament, we've got tendons, and we've got that nerve. Just like you can have a damaged ligament of your ankle, have a sprained ankle that's swollen and black and blue and sore, you could potentially damage this ligament here, which might be inflamed and impinging upon that median nerve. 
Just like you can have tendinitis, inflammation of a tendon in your elbow, you could have tendinitis, an inflamed tendon in your carpal tunnel, and that inflammation could impinge upon this median nerve as well. Essentially, we've got a tunnel with a ligament on top, tendons through the middle, that nerve through the middle. Anything that causes inflammation could be a problem. That could be overuse, that could be trauma, like a slip and a fall, that could be an impact injury, like falling off a snowboard or a skateboard, or any combination thereof. Another common cause of carpal tunnel syndrome is pregnancy. During pregnancy, women's blood literally doubles, and that can often cause swelling in the ankles and also in the wrists. Swelling is another form of inflammation, is another way that potentially we could impinge upon that median nerve. The last common contributing or causal factor for carpal tunnel syndrome is rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, the itis, again, inflammation. The rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition where your body is mixing up signals and creating an inflammatory response in your joints. More inflammation, more impingement, less freedom. Your median nerve is getting pushed upon and you are getting pain definitely in and around the wrist, possibly down into your fingers. You might even have weakness and numbness, especially as the day progresses. So that's the anatomy of your carpal tunnel. That's some of the things that are going wrong. The question is now, what are you supposed to do? The standard advice doesn't really work, so let's take a look at some very simple self-care routine you can do at home. In terms of self-care for your carpal tunnel syndrome, we want to work on mobilization, so keeping things moving, and also strengthening the muscles, but also positively stressing your ligaments and tendons of that carpal tunnel region. But we want to be really, really careful. I'd like you, before you start, to give your pain a ranking on a scale of 1 to 10. This is completely subjective, but let's imagine 10 is so bad that you can't type or work, and a 1 is hardly feel anything at all. 5 would be somewhere in between. If you're above a 7 out of 10, please skip this, but if you're somewhere in the range of 5, 6, 7 out of 10, let's do some exercises to mobilize your wrist and also to stabilize and get a little bit of traction on your wrist as well. What I've got here is a can of black beans. You can use a can of anything, and I've got a little strap here. You can use any kind of belt you have at home, and even if you don't have one, I'll show you how to do it without a strap as well. We'll start off assuming that you're in a pretty painful situation. Might be why you're watching this video now. So we'll start off really gently, really mildly. I'd like you to place your forearm down on the table and brace your forearm with your opposite hand. And we'll start off by extending our wrist, extending our wrist, extending our wrist. Now flip over so you have palm face up and let's flex our wrist. Two, three. Now from here lift your arm up and again brace your forearm and we'll paint circles with our hand. It's called circumduction. And so imagine there's a paintbrush on the end of your middle finger and we'll paint circles. One, two, three in a clockwise motion. Then we'll paint again the other way. Three, two, one. Now even though usually just one wrist is affected, we'll do both sides. You should do both sides too to keep your body balanced out or you might end up with one side healing and the other side triggering. So let's move over to our left side now. Bracing your forearm, we'll extend the wrist. One, two, three, and now flip your palm up and we'll flex the wrist. Three, two, one. Lift your forearm up and we'll brace and hold on here. Again, imagine you're painting. One, two, we're going clockwise, three, and now paint the other direction, three, counterclockwise, two, and one. The next part of this practice is to get some basic traction on your wrist. Traction is this idea of pulling apart a joint just to give it a little more space. Your wrist doesn't have a whole lot of play, but it can help to relieve a little bit of impingement if that's what's going on. I'm going to use a belt or a strap. You don't necessarily need to. On the second side, I'll show you how to do it with your hand. But assuming you have a belt like this, I'll wrap it around my wrist and then it'll leave between my middle finger and my ring finger. I'll attempt to keep my wrist as straight as I can, so not adducting or abducting. I'll place my elbows down and I'll gently pull my wrist apart with about a 5 out of 10 intensity. But again, making sure that I'm staying in a pain range that is very, very moderate, if at all. 3, 4 out of 10 maximum. 
Good, I'll release that and I'll switch sides. Let's imagine you're hanging out at your desk and you don't have access to a belt. I'll instead use my middle finger and my thumb and I'll really gently, really gently with my elbows brace, create, there we go, just a little bit more space in my wrist. Holding here, creating just a little bit of traction. With the wrist under traction, my left wrist in this case, do your best just to relax completely. We'll hold here three, two, and one. Great, so we've now mobilized. We've got a little bit of traction. The next phase would be adding in strength. You have to do this really, really carefully, but essentially we want to load your wrist. And we can do that by applying pressure. Eventually, of course, you can do things like push-ups and eventually you can do things like planks, but that's probably a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the road. For now, what we'd like to do is just very, very carefully begin to load your wrists. And I will do that by spreading my fingers so I distribute the weight very equally. I don't want to bunch up and I don't want to supinate or pronate my hands. So I'll spread my fingers. I'll do the, my best to have my wrist facing directly forward. And I'll simply take my body weight into my wrists as if I were doing a half push-up here for five, four, three, two, one. Sit down, release, and shake it out. You'll have a tendency for your first knuckle to come up. Don't do that. Press your knuckle down. You'll have a tendency for your fingers to collapse inward. Do your best to spread out, claw, and grip the floor. Let's do it one more time. I'll connect my finger pads, all five of them down into the table. I'll stand up and I'll take my body weight into my hands here for five, four, three, two, one. Sit down, release, and shake it out. Remember when we started, I encouraged you to choose a number for your pain. It's very important that that number, that pain discomfort either stays the same or it gets better. If anything that we're doing makes it worse, you need to back off and take a break. How things scale. So let's say it's two weeks from now and you're starting to feel less pain. Your number went from a six down to a four in your working day and even that's worse, maybe it's only at a five. It's time to start adding a little bit more Resistance, you can add a little bit more weight, and this is where your can of beans comes in. You can also do this with a dumbbell, of course, but sometimes even a light dumbbell is too heavy. How would we do this? We would repeat the exact same exercises, and doing these exercises at your desk can be a really great way to take a work break from repetitive stress, can be a really, really simple way to both mobilize and strengthen the muscles and those soft tissues in and around your wrist. How long will it take to heal? It really just depends on you. Some people might heal up in a matter of one to two weeks. Generally speaking, within four to eight weeks maximum, most people have fully resolved. If you're not getting success, if things are getting worse, again, like I mentioned before, please do go check with a doctor. You'll see lots of different so-called ergonomic or perfect posture keyboards and things like this might be helpful to play around with a different work setup. However, remember there is no perfect posture. The best posture is often a different posture. If you're working all day like this or all day like this, all of those can lead to repetitive stress. Try to mix things up, change things up. If you're hunched over a laptop, get your computer up higher. If you have a small keyboard, try to get a broken keyboard or a bigger keyboard to play around with different work positions. The last thing I wanted to share with you is some pitfalls to avoid. In the mainstream medical community, when it comes to carpal tunnel syndrome, usually they're going to refer you to a splint. This is a really good practice, specifically at bed. I have a very simple splint here. This is actually just a wrist support. This one is really, really comfortable. You can get stiffer supports for your wrist. This one is mostly just cloth, but in the same way that a basketball player might wear high top shoes to support his or her ankles, this simple support keeps me from flexing or extending my wrist much. And I would encourage you, especially during the first two weeks of healing, to wear this at night, because oftentimes when we sleep, we unconsciously curl up and put our wrist in a funny position under our pillow. I'd also encourage you to try to incorporate this into at least two to three hours of your waking day. That might be in your evening when you're winding down. You might even be able to work with your wrist in this position. Your wrist is designed to do all of these different ranges of motion, but if you're feeling pressure and pain, reducing the range for some period of time during your day can give your body a little bit of break. Now, all the other interventions you're gonna get from the mainstream medical community are potentially problematic. The first one is a shot, a cortisone shot. 
This works incredibly well to get rid of the pain, but it hasn't fixed the underlying problem. Not the movement dysfunction, not the repetitive stress. So while a shot will make you feel better pretty much instantly within the next 24 hours, it's not going to solve the underlying problem. So be very careful with cortisone shots. I'm not saying don't do it, just be careful. And then surgery, which of course is the last resort. For very few people, they need to go that route. I'd encourage you to explore all the other options before you go that far. Carpal tunnel syndrome can be really, really painful and uncomfortable can disrupt your work life and really keep you from doing the activities you love. That's the bad news. On the flip side, most people can get it under control within a matter of weeks, especially if you do some of this self-care stuff. Hope you found this helpful. If you'd like more science-based yoga videos, hit subscribe down below. Love to hear from you in the comments. There's a PDF down below with these exercises that we've just done, which you might find useful. You can find my full teaching calendar at yogabody.com and I'll see you in the next video.